Greetings and welcome to the Healthy Sales Chick Show. So happy you are here. As my friend Paula Fellingham says, the founder of Win Win Women, always we open our hearts and we open our arms and we welcome you. I am Nancy White, the host of the Healthy Sales Chick Show, and I'm so grateful and glad that you have come to be with us today. I have a question for you. Are your body cells happy and healthy from head to toe? Maybe they might need a little refreshing or makeover. This program is all about your healthy mind, your healthy body, and your healthy spirit. For optimum health, we need to nourish all three areas every single day. Each week, we're going to discuss an attribute, tips, or suggestions for acquiring and maintaining, maintaining's always the trigger there, and the fun trick, a healthy mind, body, and spirit. And it always starts in our mind. So our topic today is our incredible body and proteins. We will be talking about what proteins are, what are great proteins, some benefits, some ways to know how much protein you should be incorporating in your diet every day, and also some watch things to tips to watch for if you might not be having enough protein. But no matter what, we are not perfect and we're always gonna make good, better, best choices every single day. So proteins are so important in our body and our body, just for your information, has 37 trillion, and yes, that's with a T, trillion cells. And we can all agree that we can have more cells than we could ever count. And they're always completely regenerating, which is such a miracle. Our body completely regenerates about every six to eight years, except for our nerve cells. So there are six essential nutrients that our body needs our help in providing that our body just can't do it on its own. Wouldn't that be interesting that we could just wake up, go throughout our day, maybe drink water, exercise, do all these things and never have to put nutrition past our lips? God didn't make us that way. So you may wonder what is an essential nutrient? It again, it's a nutrient that our body cannot synthesize completely on its own or in the adequate amount but it has to be provided by our diets. These are necessary nutrients for the body to function properly. And again, we're always going through that time of what we're nourishing and what we're consuming and absorbing and becomes part of us. People don't realize that whatever we put past our lips becomes part of our bodies within about mm, 24 to 48 hours. So the six essential nutrients include proteins, carbohydrates, good carbohydrates, fats, good fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. And we're going to talk about those different um, essential nutrients at, at another time. But today we're going to talk about proteins, which play such a critical role in our body. So proteins do most of the work in our cells. And what are proteins used for? I love it, repair and maintenance. That maintenance word again, but proteins are known as the building blocks of our body because it's vital again in the maintenance of our tissue, including development of our hair, skin, eyes, muscles, and organs. And they're all made from protein. As people get older, like that's what we want to do is continue to get older in age That's our goal. Sometimes older people, mature people, I can say that because I'm almost 70, mature people, our glands and our organs are all made of protein. And if we're not having enough protein, they're going to rob whatever um, the protein comes from. They're always going to get the first protein. So that's why you'll see some people when they get older, their muscles are atrophying. So And that's such a miracle. We have the right amount of protein and we exercise and we can really build muscle back. You're never too old to build good, healthy muscle. 
whether it's your glands and organs or those guns. But children need more protein for body weight than adults do because they're in that growing and developing stage. So that's a good thing to know about your children and the proteins that they may need. Again, protein is a major source of energy. Don't you love it? Energy, we need to, like that little energizer bunny, we need to keep on going. But you can consume, if you consume more protein than your body needs, it again will be used for energy. So protein is involved with the creation of our hormones us women know a lot about hormones <laughs> and it helps the body to control the functions that involve the interactions between several organs. Insulin is a small protein hormone that regulates blood sugar. I didn't, I bet you didn't know that um, protein that um, we're in with the insulin. Enzymes are another uh, protein that increases the rate of our chemical reaction in our body. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about how they have digestive um, enzymes that help break down the foods that they're taking. Proteins also form antibodies that help prevent infection, illness, and disease. And these proteins identify and assist in destroying antigens such as bacteria and viruses. We talk about viruses and we'll talk about that later too, about how important it is to use some things to counterbalance and fight off viruses or shorten their lifespans. So I just think it's time for us to bring in my stop sign. You know that I love my stop sign and some fun jokes and I'll try to say them with my little Southern accent. But these are a couple of jokes that I found that I thought were fun about different proteins. It said, I found a spider in my protein powder today. I politely asked him to get out of my way. And that's W-H-E-Y, get out of my way. So what do you call a Mexican bodybuilder who runs out of protein? No way, Jose. A friend told me about a wonder food that she discovered contains protein fiber, and good fats. That's nuts, I exclaimed. <laughs> yes, that is nuts. And not all nuts are the same. I love having nuts as a snack. Um, and it's just a really healthy way, but not all nuts are equal. So again, what kind of protein should you consider? There's lots of choices. But based on years of research, Dr suggest a clean, undenatured uh, whey is superior for building muscle, especially in aging adults. And undenatured just means that it hasn't been heated so far that it is killing the amino acids and digestive enzymes in it. So look for undenatured whey when you're choosing a whey product. But in general, the body burns carbohydrates first, and that is sugars then fats, and then proteins in that order. But there's also some great plant-based proteins. And one is a great source is almonds. They're a great anti-inflammatory and also a great source for a healthy fats and fiber. And think about if you have a little bit of um, challenge with your digestion eating um, almonds, you can soak a raw almond in water overnight and then in the morning, just take off the little skin and they are delicious. So that's just a tip for you if you love almonds, but that little skin might be causing some challenges in your tummy. And again, nuts aren't a complete protein since they don't have a full range of amino acids, but they do serve as a great addition to a healthy diet. Spirulina is another great source of protein. It's a superfood. You've probably heard about superfoods before, but it's approximately 65 to 71% complete protein. Um, and then it's virtually higher than any other in an unprocessed food. And unlike most other forms of protein, the protein in spirulina is about 85 to 95% digestible. Remember too, when we're thinking about vitamins and the foods that we're consuming, it is what is getting absorbed that is important. 
So remember absorption rate is so important when you're considering nutrients, vitamins, whatever it is. Fish is another wonderful um, healthy protein, but not all fish is equal either. Sometimes where it's or the origin matters, if it is a um, farmed fish, then they're probably not getting a natural diet. And sometimes they're often sick. And sometimes they may not have all the omega-3s, but also they could be full of antibiotics and also um, dioxins. Wild is always best. And just know where your fish is coming from and you will probably be doing great. But just, again, it's always about awareness and you are in control. Queen, Queen Na, I love it. Some people call it quinoa. Now I can't even say it. Quinoa is a complete protein. Isn't that awesome? And I love the taste of it. But it is easy to cook. Another great protein is buckwheat. You don't hear about that too much anymore, but it's a grain or seed, and it's also great to um, cook. We all have heard the pros and the cons about eggs. Sometimes people say, you know, and if you do have high cholesterol and you're watching different things, then you be mindful of those things. But cage-free eggs are the very best that you can get. And the whole egg, if you can have it, is great because that egg yolk has great vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, and also the omega-3 fatty acids. Hemp seeds came on the scene more prevalent a few years ago, and it's not just about um, any CBD oils or anything like that, but it's really hemp seeds. But they're easily digestible, and they're easily absorbed, and they utilize or in our body better. Chia seeds is another great protein. I love the little crunchiness of chia seeds, even if you put them in muffins or different things like that to just um, increase the protein. It's fun, but it's also been called a miracle food because it offers a complete protein and it also has some anti-inflammatory um, properties. Good, easy to cook and easy to, um, to just incorporate in some of your recipes. So whey protein is found mainly in meal replacement shakes, powders, protein powders, and it's ready to consume. Um, and it contains all the essential um, amino acids and is particularly high in the branch chain amino acids. So just make sure you know where it's coming from, if it's grass fed, organic and hormone free. Again, just a little bit of research and reading your labels and just um, knowing where things are sourced from. Lentils are another great um, source of protein in it, but it's not a complete protein, but it's a great source of amino acids and healthy carbs. Remember good healthy carbs and great fiber. But when you combine them with grains, they form a complete protein. So remember sometimes when we combine some foods, um, one might be not all that it should be by itself, but when you combine it with something else, then it becomes a complete protein. Organic chicken is another thing. And chicken contains all the essential amino acids. And if possible, ch choose chickens that were raised without hormones and antibiotics. Then it makes a difference. I don't know if you've ever tried both um, in the taste, but also it makes a difference on the effects of our body. Cottage cheese and Greek yogurt, if you're not sensitive to dairy, are another wonderful source of proteins. And you can also combine those with things. And just again, read those labels. Make sure that you're avoiding um, hormones, chemicals, and hidden antibiotics. Tempa is a, made out of fermented soy. And it can be a great source of a clean protein for vegans, but and especially for people that you need to check, make sure you don't have a soy allergy. Because unfortunately, again, in the United States, 90% of soy is genetically modified. So check to make sure it's organic and then make sure sometimes women, as we age, we have to watch our estrogen levels because we don't want to set triggers or have anything that could set us up for heart um, problems, heart disease. If you eat meat, 
grass-fed beef is what you should look for. And it's loaded with zinc and iron and all the amino acids. And again, make sure that it's grass-fed and not grain-fed. Chickens eat grain. Cows and cattle eat grass and haze and those types of things. So just again, be educated and you can be educated in a, just a click of a button with your um, smartphone or your computer. So something for those who also love plant-based is pea and rice protein powder. And when you combine them together, they actually provide one of the best tasting protein concentrates. So again, you don't have to be a meat eater or just all vegan. Some people do a little combination of both. Do what's best for your body. We all have different body types and we know our bodies better than anyone. So finishing up on some of our protein sources, have you heard about the benefits of protein pacing? And that's P-A-C-I-N-G, protein pacing. Dr. Arsenio has been a key figure in research on protein pacing. And he was also a lead researcher in a series of clinical studies that involved isogenics products. But investigating protein pacing for losing weight, cardiovascular health, and athletic performance has some great clinical studies and results. So protein pacing, Dr. Arsenio defines, is the scientifically proven combination of eating healthy, lean protein foods at the right time of day to maximize health and performance. Who would have ever thought that when we were growing up, we had to make sure that we were eating at the right time of day. But our bodies can only absorb about 20 to 30 grams of protein at a time. So keep that little nugget in your mind when I tell you how much protein you should be eating. So the factor, one of the factors depends on our activity level. If you're sitting in front of a computer or you're stagnant or in an office and you're not up running around all day, you should have a half a gram of protein per body weight. If you are a mom running after children all day and you're active and doing things and you're not sitting down very much, you are burning more protein and calories than somebody that is just sitting behind a desk. You should have about three-fourths of gram of protein per your body weight. And so if you're an athlete and that is somebody that's working out hard um, several days a week and also just doing a lot of exertion, an athlete you're gonna probably require around one to even four grams of um, protein per your body weight. For an example, if I weighed 150 pounds, half of that is 75 grams of protein a day, but it has to be divided up throughout the day. Because remember, our body only absorbs that 20 to 30 grams of protein at a time. So by consuming protein throughout the day, it's keeping your fire burning, you can maximize your muscle maintenance, there's that word again, maintenance, during weight loss, and then also muscle building when you combine with exercising. So just for your own information, you can just figure out how many grams of protein that you need to be consuming a day. It takes more energy to burn protein, but our bodies will always burn sugars or carbs, some of those unhealthy carbs, sugars and fats first. And protein um, will also help you to become satiated, to stay full longer. Sometimes you just might need to eat a little handful of nuts when you think you're hungry. Sometimes you may need to drink some water when you have, you're hungry. Water will be another day and a great another subject that we need to talk about. So William Shakespeare, this is a quote. He said, our bodies are our gardens to which our wills are gardeners. That's why it's called self-care. We get to be the gardeners of our gardens. And what better way that we can do and think about taking care of these temples is just making sure that we are mindful of our self-care. Unfortunately, somebody else cannot do it for us. 
I cannot exercise for you. You cannot exercise for me. But one of the things we can do is to make those good, better, best choices to schedule those times in for our self-care. And, you know, we take care of so many other people, especially as women, and we really sometimes neglect what we're doing. Signs that you may not be eating enough protein. Now, this can be other signs for some other conditions. But if you have looked and to see how much protein that you're eating and you're still having enough protein, but you are still having some of these signs or symptoms, then you might need to have some other things checked out. So these are just some suggestions for you to know that you might not need to check how much protein you're having if you're having some of these symptoms or signs. One of them is that you're working out, but that belly fat won't bulge. You need to be having some protein right after you finish working out to replenish. And again, within about 30 minutes is perfect. So if you're working out, then just in your mind, you need to be thinking, all right, I need to plan and plan for some type of protein that is a good healthy protein to get back into your body. Another symptom or a sign could be you're constantly craving sugars and carbs. There's also some times when we are lacking minerals in our bodies. And again, we'll talk about that another day. What mineral you are lacking is causing a craving. But if you're not having enough protein, then your body may be looking for those carbs because you need a quick burn and your body is looking for that fuel. Another one is that your skin becomes dry and flaky. And we know a lot of times that is with water, the amount of water we're going to be consuming. But if you're consuming the right amount of water and you're doing those things, you know, moisturizing your skin and taking care of your skin's skin, that's another way for you just to think about, you might want to check your protein. I love this one. You're hungry an hour after eating. How many of us have eaten? And then within an hour, we're going, I'm hungry again. <laughs> Usually your body has not had adequate protein. You feel tired all the time. Now, again, remember I said, Sometimes there could be other conditions and some people that are going through some challenges with anxiety or depression, or you're having some other things going on, give yourself some grace and space, but just know, check on that protein amount again. Your hair may be thinning and you don't understand why. You're losing weight, but your clothes are still tight. So that's an indication that your muscle, you're losing some muscle mass but you need to also be losing some um, unhealthy visceral fat or releasing some um, things that need to be gone. Another one is you're always bloated. Sometimes we feel like we've eaten something and we just feel bloated. And yes, it could be something that is been genetically modified. It could be something that is not um, happy in your tummy. You may need to have some probiotics. You may need to have some other things. But again, that's just one of the signs and symptoms that you might not be having enough protein. So you may be curious why and how I became known as the healthy sales chick. So when I was nine years old, my father died of Hodgkin's, a blood cancer, which is now curable. And then when my brother, John, my oldest brother that I dearly loved, was 22, was in the Navy and studying to be a doctor. He discovered his own leukemia and lived two years longer. But my mom lived to be 96 and she was my hero, still is, and she was my healthy nut. So she was juicing before Jack LaLanne had a juicer or even introduced his juicer using um, collodial silver, barley greens, all those types of things. And again, their deaths birthed a passion in me to become more knowledgeable about healthy living, especially being preventative. And that healthy lifestyle is gonna continue on until I am in my new uh, permanent body. But I will never stop learning. There's always things to become educated about. And so the thing too, for myself, we are now living in more of a combative stage. You know, five decades ago, 
it was, you know, people had great food sources and then they came along and said we had to be doing some um, supplemental vitamins and nutrients. And then when they started throwing in the toxins and impurities on all of our foods, um, and especially pesticides and herbicides, and that started rap creating havoc in our bodies. And then they brought in genetically modified things. And when I was researching 10 years ago about genetically modified foods, I, it was just so much common sense for me going, okay, it takes 16 months to grow a genetically modified salmon where it would normally take three years. And I'm sitting there thinking, what does that do to your body if you're consuming something that's genetically modified that has been speeded up to grow? So in this day and time, we are now in a combative stage where we do have to supplement with some vitamins and nutrients and things. We do have to do some gentle um, cellular cleansing and replenishing. We do have to use our common sense, especially when it comes to different things that we're exposed to, to build our immune system up is huge and paramount for all of us right now. But if you find yourself running out of energy before the end of the day, and you ask, who shrunk my clothes? You want to age with vitality and clarity of your mind. Find out how you can achieve and maintain your best health. Contact me. I would absolutely love to have a conversation with you and for a complimentary 30-minute time, and it's going to be all about you. You can go to my website, www.thehealthysaleschick.com. That's thehealthysaleschick.com and schedule a session to talk with me. We can do by phone or Zoom, WhatsApp, whatever works. And then there's also some free quizzes there that you can take on your own about your overall health and how you rate. And then also a quiz on stress. Again, we're all combating anxiety and stress. There's good stress and bad stress, but it gives you a great picture of where you stand in your health. And then you will also get some great suggestions and tips with your quizzes. But thank you so much for being with us. Again, I'm Nancy White, a 30 plus year health advisor in living a natural, preventative, healthy lifestyle. And please join us next week for our episode on Wednesday at 7 Eastern time on the Win Win Women, I love it, Win Win Women TV show. Until then, be blessed, take care of your temporary temple until you receive your permanent maintenance freedom. Look forward to our time again soon. Thank you so much. Bye.